So today we will spend some time uh, in understanding what is uh, meant by biasing. Uh, we have discussed about the transistor operation, right? The working principle of transistor, the different currents, character current, discant emitter current, their relationship, and different voltages like uh, base emitter voltage, correct emitter voltage, character based voltage, and uh, for the proper operation of the transistor as an amplifier, uh, what kind of biasing you require? Hopefully, you can remember. Uh, Yes. So base emitter junction is forward best and the character based junction should be reverse best. Now one question was that why uh, this biasing is important? Why do you require biasing at all? Because ultimately our objective is to use the transistor as an amplifier. You understand now what is meant by amplification. So for the better, let us, let us now consider, suppose this is your uh, amplifier circuit. of uh, this uh, NPN transistor. This is the emitter terminal, as you understand, this is the base terminal and this is the collector terminal. Okay, what we are going to do here, so this is a three terminal device, base, emitter, collector. You have three terminals and several voltages like base emitter voltage, collector emitter voltage, collector base voltage. You have three currents, emitter current, base current, collector current. Then, uh, if you just observe that, suppose uh, we would like to design an amplifier, right? The amplifier means what? You have some input signal and accordingly, uh, this input Amplified will be magnified, right? So you'll be having some another output. So whenever I say signal, so uh, hopefully you can remember that signal is nothing but the value of one quantity with respect to the other quantity. And here the the indicator is the time with respect to time we are measuring. Suppose this is your input signal. Suppose let's assume that my input signal is something like that, a sinusoidal signal, right? With a magnitude say uh, one unit. Suppose one unit. One unit, maybe one volt or one millivolt, whatever it may be. Whenever I say amplification, that means uh, what we have in response to that, we have something like that. And suppose difference, let it be, say five. Say for example, that is the basic sense of amplification. You have some signal, some variation with respect to obviously uh, this uh, this one. Uh, this is the time axis. This is the time axis. So with respect to time, we are measuring, right? Some variation is there. One unit variation with respect to that might be it is it is riding on zero degrees as you can understand. It is riding on zero degrees, no DC level, right? So one sign of omega t, millivolt sign of omega t, and this is some five millivolt sign of omega t. So that means uh, your inputs say five units, right? That is amplification factor, magnification factor. So, at the input side, what you have? At the input side, you have signal, let it be V in, and the output of another signal, that is V out. So, this V in, V out, so this, since these are signals, so these are measured with respect to some reference voltage. With respect to zero, we are measuring, right? So, for the input, you do have two points. One is the reference, second one is the actual. For the output as well, you have two ports. One is the reference, second one is the out. So these two reference must be the same. You have the same reference. With respect to the same reference, you are measuring, right? So for amplifier, so for 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 BJ, understand uh, we have uh, three you know, three terminals. Basically, now out of these three, one terminal is, com is considered to be the common terminal, the reference terminal, right? Terminal we are applying the input, and with respect to that terminal, we are measuring the output. Now we will discuss this thing in detail. Whenever we move to the unit number three, that is a small signal analysis. What has been shown here, uh, what you have, uh, you have this particular transistor BJT. Uh, in this, as you can understand, this is your, uh, this is your N, this is P, this is N, right? NPN transistor. This one is the emitter terminal, this is the base terminal, this is the collector terminal. And what you have, apart from this transistor, we have two resistors here present. The RB, this resistor, which is connected between the power supply to this base, and another resistor which is connected between the power this collector. And the emitter is connected to ground, simply. Okay, and now, apart from that, so this is, uh, as of now, you can understand, okay, this is the design of amplifier. And we are applying some input signal over here. 
some time heading signal with some uh, capacitor. Now for the time being, consider this part, this part of the of the circuit. Let's now concentrate on that part only, because this part deals with the with the biasing. This part deals with the actual small signal amplification. So why biasing is important at all? So what you are expecting? Uh, suppose there is some fluctuation over here at the base terminal, and because of which we would expect fluctuation over here at the at the collector terminal. You understand that last day while discussing the transistor operation, if my VB, this base perimeter voltage, is increased, suppose, if that, that VBB voltage, if you can remember that VBB voltage, what was the expression? It was like VBB is equal to I plus VB. Right. Uh, if that VBB voltage, this base voltage, if this is increased, what do you, what do you expect? Do you expect that there, there should be more current? Because what was the expression? The expression was something like that. The expression was like VB is equal to IBRB plus VBE. That VBE is 0 0.7 volt typically. Uh, if you change now, now let's assume that I'm changing this one. This is not constant. This is this is a variable one. This one is fixed. RB is also fixed. So if there is a change in VBE, it will lead to the corresponding change in IB. So if you have more VBE, you have more IB, right? And then if you have more IB, you understand that there is a relation between IC and IB. IC is equal to beta times IB. So if you have more IB, that means you have more IC. If you have more IC, and obviously then what you have over here, this collector potential at this particular point is nothing but your VCC, this voltage minus ICRC, collector voltage, and that is basically the collector emitter voltage here is grounded, right? So if you can remember that, we have another expression. It was like so VCE is equal to VCC minus ICRC. Now there, if you if you change this particular value, if you change this uh, VBB, then what, what you have, have different IB, your supply voltage is RC is also fixed. So if you change VB, IC will also vary. And accordingly, DC will also vary. Right? So that variation we will deal with whenever we consider the small signal model. But as of now, we have to have some non-zero IB, some non-zero IC before I apply the signal over here. Before I apply any signal over here, remember this is a small signal, that means this kind of signal. This kind of signal that we are going to apply at the input and we are going to amplify this time varying signal. We are not going to amplify any DC signal. We are going to amplify any time varying signal. Okay, now in order to do that, first of all we have to estimate some non-zero base current and non-zero collector current and non-zero collector temperature voltage. If you do not have any such register present over here or any such register present over here, what do you expect? You expect that there not be any current, isn't it? If, if this is not over here, so this particular base meter junction will not be forward drive. You have to establish some non-zero current, non-zero DC current, current. That voltage is, is a DC voltage, a battery. Okay. So you have before you, before you apply any small signal over here, you have to establish non-zero DC current, DC base current that will give non-zero DC collector current, and ultimately from where you will be getting some non-zero DC collector emitter voltage. Sir, so if we are connecting an uh, that AC signal and DC signal is off, then will it be non-zero? Okay, we'll discuss. This. Whenever we, we discuss the, the notion of amplification, at that point of time we have to define analysis. What is known as the DC analysis? So whenever you do the DC analysis, then we will make all the AC signal, all the time emitting signal inactive. And we will do the analysis and that is our job today. And then the second part is that whenever we will consider the variation of the small signal, that DC analysis, the small signal analysis, at that point of time, the DC signal is considered to be absent. But the total amplification, whenever I consider the total amplifier as a whole, it involves the DC analysis as well as AC analysis. And as your, your amplifier is a linear amplifier, that means it must follow the theory of superposition. That means overall output is basically the sum of the DC output plus the small signal output. Okay. 
Now in this unit, in this unit number two, we will deal with, we will deal only uh, with the uh, the DC analysis. But why, why that uh, non-zero IB or non-zero? Last we have seen hopefully this IBQ, this ICQ, yeah. this VCQ. This coefficient, uh, uh, coefficient collector current, coefficient base current, coefficient collector emitter voltage. Now our job here is to establish some non-zero uh, DC base current, non-zero DC collector current, and accordingly non-zero DC collector emitter voltage. And there are several other mechanisms for that. This second is a very uh, fundamental one. Okay. Well, so now. Hopefully, uh, you can remember, this is basically a recapitulation we have done last day. The DC load line, uh, VC versus IC. So, you have like, uh, if uh, VC is equal to, when IC is equal to 0, the minimum current, minimum current, then what is your collector emitter voltage? That means that is equal to VCC, because that was the expression. VCC is equal to, VC is equal to VCC minus, that was the expression, if you can remember. It. The expression was VCE is equal to VCC minus ICRC. So there you have two different extreme conditions. One condition is IC minimum, what could have been the minimum IC value that is zero. IC zero and which leads to VC is equal to VCC. And in that case we will call that transistor is off, there is no current cutoff, right? So which signifies this particular point, this point and then the other uh, point is that when the your uh, this collector to I mean this IC is maximum when IC is maximum so maximum I can consider my VC is minimum now ideally I can consider that VC is equal to zero but for uh, for practical uh, tra transistor operation this VC cannot be zero there is a minimum value of VC that has to be maintained which is called VC saturation typically the value is equal to say 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 volt now if I just so whenever I consider okay it is uh, but you remember that particular expression that VC is equal to VCC minus ICRC, there you can have for IC and VC you can have the minimum value of 0 only. So if IC is equal to 0 then VCC and when uh, VC is equal to 0 then IC is equal to VCC upon RC. So from the circuit point of view you can have these two extreme points, this point over here and this point over there. From the circuit view, but from the device point of view you don't have this, uh, this IC sat is equal to VCC upon RC because this VC cannot be equal to 0. As far as, the, as far as the operation of this uh, VJT is concerned. VC cannot be 0, that is, you have some minimum value, which is called the saturation voltage, uh, which is given by 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 volt. So, whenever, if you can remember uh, that graph, what you have, the, the graph or something like that. Can you remember these graphs? Okay. So the minimum value of VC, what you have over here, this minimum VC is not equal to zero. That is, you have like 0 0.2 volt or something like that. Uh, the actual voltage, actual uh, VC minimum voltage is not equal to zero, as far as the device uh, is concerned. And you are placing that device in the circuit, so you can't have VC is equal to zero. Rather, you have VC is equal to VC saturation that is 0 0.2 volt. And accordingly, you can measure. So, uh, so these are the two extreme points. So, one point over here, one point over here. This is the minimum point. So that is the Q point. No, it depends. So, this is one point. This is one point over there, and this is another point over there. So, these are two extreme points. So, you can set your uh, Q point to, to position over there, but normally don't do that. Normally, place our uh, this quiescent point over there only, in the middle, right? So that we can have the back. Right. We don't place this over. Here. If I place it over here, then the transistor is acting like an on switch, open uh, close switch. And if I place the DC operating point over here, then the transistor is acting as a as an off switch, as an off switch. That means. So here you have a close switch here. Close switch. Transistor is acting as a closed switch. That means on state. If I if I place the operating point over here and the point over there, that means the transistor is acting as an open switch, off state. But here our our objective is not to use the transistor as a switch, but rather to use it as an amplifier. So therefore, I have to place my operating point somewhere in between this range, and it's better if I place it in the middle, so that I can have the maximum fluctuation. Okay. 
to start the you know that bc should be greater than bde that is for forward active mm -hmm. okay reverse acha it is forward active reverse active okay so so that we have discussed last day this dc load line and let's let's have some uh, okay let's have some uh, calculation over there so suppose your ic is equal to ic is equal to 1 milli ampere right ic is equal to 1 milli ampere so in this particular case we have considered that okay uh, the vc value is equal to uh, the minimum could have been anything so if ic is equal to 1 milli ampere then what is your vc so i am just changing suppose i am changing this particular rd this rd is not fixed this is not fixed this value is not fixed and accordingly you can have the different values of ib and accordingly you can have different values of ic so suppose your uh, ic is such that uh, your that is equal to 1 milli ampere then what is your vc then ic 1 milli ampere it's flowing to 1 kilo ohms so that drop is equal to 1 volt drop right so one volt drop here across this here one volt drop so this voltage is 9 volt so if ic is equal to 1 milli ampere then vc is equal to 9 volt on the other hand if ic is equal to 2 milli ampere then vc is equal to 8 volt and if ic is equal to 5 milli ampere then vc is equal to 5 volt and accordingly you can have so many values so this is basically the your uh, dc load line supply is at 10 so vc is equal to vcc and what is the maximum value for ic how much 1 kilo ohms so 10 volts by 1 kilo ohms that means 10. so this is the maximum value for ic this is the maximum value for vc dc and accordingly this is the fluctuation this is a load line now you can place the operating point over here also so if you wish you can place over here that means this corresponds to what this corresponds to ic is equal to 1 milliampere vc is equal to 9 volt first point this corresponds to the second point ic 2 milliampere vc 8 volt this corresponds to the ic is equal to 5 milliampere vc is equal to 5 volt and that's the best operating point that we can have because it is placed in the middle. You have fluctuation from 0 to 10, both for VC as well as for IC, and you are placing in the middle. Right, 5 comma 5. That's the best what you can have. Typically, you can't get like this because you don't have like 1 million exactly uh, collector. And you can have some like uh, say 1.5 million, 1.3 million here. It's not exactly one. For the sake of understanding, we have just considered some hypothetical values. Can have so, so that you can have the feel of what is happening uh, inside of okay well so as I've already mentioned so you can have different uh, Q points this is the load line this is the fluctuation of this a uh, variation of this uh, ICQ and VCQ as as your uh, device is placed in that particular circuit, you can have any value, right? But remember, this is obtained when the device, when the widget is placed. When the widget is placed in that particular circuit. So accordingly, these are the so these are the points. This is one point. This is another point. So these are the different operating points. Because this particular straight line corresponds to the behavior of the circuit, and this particular state, the state of straight lines corresponds to the behavior of the transistor itself. And since the transistor itself is placed in the circuit, so the current value, the IC value, what you have, but the, the common value, the intersection of these two curves. So you can have either here or here or here. Or, or here, or you can have so many because here they, they are constant only some yes. uh, Indian numbers like 10 microampere, 30 microampere. You can have the intermediate values as well. You can have another state of cars for 15 microampere. For example, this one has been shown for say might, might be a 35 microampere. This one, this was 35 microampere. You have so many, but the point is that if you have 20 microampere. If IB is equal to 20 microampere and T is fixed, RB is fixed, RC everything is fixed, and IB is equal to 20 microampere, then this should be a uh, Q point. It's, it cannot be this point. It cannot be this. 
at the middle of uh, your uh, this vcc suppose if this is equal to say, uh, 10 volt or 12 volt supply then you should expect that it should be very much close to 6 volt or 5 volt in the middle so this is the optimum so this one is optimum this is the optimum collector current right and, and what happens let it let it be say 35 micro ampere let, let's assume that your uh, uh, optimum base current is 35 micro i mean your uh, dc base current is 35 micro ampere right now, if the DC base can be 35 microampere, and suppose I allow, then then comes the, your uh, small signal. Then comes your small signal. So when the small signal is here, then the then I mean the, in the base current, because that time your beam is not fixed. It's very right. And suppose the fluctuation is plus 15 to minus. So you place it at 35, 35 to 15. That is 15. 35 minus 15. That is 20. So then you have this kind of fluctuation for IP. You have 35 present as 15 up to 50 minus 15 up to 20. Right. And I understand that the fluctuation of the base current is plus minus 15 microampere. Now, suppose now as long as you are and suppose this, this 50 microampere uh, the highest base current under the active region. If the base current is more, more the device enters into the uh, in the saturation region. So that is the maximum limit. Now suppose and here it is 0 microampere, that's great. And now suppose you wish to place the, the DC base current at 40 microampere over here. Suppose this is suppose you would like to place the uh, DC operating point over here. What is the problem then? If it is 40, if it is placed at 40, then you cannot have plus 15. You can't have plus 15. You have maximum as plus 10. Because if you if you make any attempt to make it plus 15, then uh, from 50 to 55, the device enters into the saturation. And remember what is the saturation? You don't have this I is equal to beta I with that expression. And that expression is responsible, that is responsible for having a linear amplification. So, uh, saturation means, suppose you uh, let's assume that when I is equal to 50 microampere or greater than that, then I is greater than 50 microampere, then your device enters into the saturation. Beyond this point, the device enters into the saturation. So, you would always like to place your base current within this amplitude. say minimum is zero because if it is less than zero, that means the device is off. Zero, zero microns. So, zero to 50 is your range. Right. It is your range. So, it's, it would be better if you place it at 25 in the middle. No, no, that relation to that. I is equal to beta IB. I is equal to beta IB. That means if you change amount then the corresponding IC also equal amount. I mean the, the proportionality constant is con is fixed. Right? You, you know this relationship no? IC is equal to IC is equal to B. that relation is only true whenever the device is operating in the action region or linear region. So linear IC is equal to beta IB but that relation doesn't hold good for saturation and what happens is, what happens saturation region, how to, then how to find out the collector current and the saturation region? How to find it out? How to find out the collector current then? In saturation region? So the IC goes to IS and How to find out the, the collector current under saturation? Suppose I, I understand the device enters into the saturation region. Right. Then what about the collector current? The collector current is not fixed. So now we see it a fixed here. Yeah. Yeah. This is equal to this is saturation 0 0.2 volt. 0 .2. You know the value. This is equal to VC plus, plus IC. Yeah. If you know VC saturation is equal to 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 volt, then VCC minus that volt upon RC will give you the corresponding IC value. Right? Now even if you change over there, you will see that because 
under this condition, what is your IC then? This IC is given by under saturation region, VCC minus saturation, right? Divided by RC. Suppose VCC is equal to 10 volt, VCC saturation is equal to say 0 0.2 volt. So then 9.8 volt, suppose RC is equal to uh, 1 uh, kilo ohms. Right? Or let, let me say uh, than that. Or anyway, this is a 1 kilo ohms say for example. So 9.8 9 volt, 1 kilo ohms. That means 9.8 milliampere. So now, even if you change the IV, uh, suppose you, you increase IV, you want to, then what happens? Basically, beta drops. And if you would like to relate to beta IV, then beta is no longer constant. In the saturation, in the active region or linear region, the beta is constant, say 100 or 150, 200, whatever it may be. But uh, whenever the device enters into saturation, then your IV that is 9.8 uh, milliampere, for example. Now, even if you make IV is equal to 50, then also uh, 9.8. If I is equal to say 60 microampere, then 9.8. If I is equal to 80 microampere, then also 9.8. Right? So, what happens if you would like to maintain a relationship, I is equal to beta IV, that relationship says that the beta value drops. So, our objective is to make, is to, is to ensure that the device always remains in the saturation, in the active or linear region. Doesn't enter into the Neither in saturation nor in cut. So, we have You have an experiment. So, I don't know whether you will take the power electronics course as an, as an, as an, as an honors paper. The power electronics laboratory, uh, there, there, there is an experiment. Whenever the device, when the transistor enters into the saturation, you are increasing the IV value. But remember, this IC is, uh, is fixed. So, this is minus VC is set up on RC. In a given circuit, in a given circuit, your VCC is fixed in board. This is 6.2 volt, RC is fixed, 1 kilo ohms for example, 9.8 that's fixed. Then we increase IV by increasing more, by pushing more uh, uh, charge. IV increases, IC fits, the beta drops. Into relation? Relation yes, doesn't hold good, so that's what I'm saying. Huh? Yes, so you don't have IC the beta IV relation then. In other words, if you like, would like to make it, then this IV beta drops. So we don't want to we don't want to exploit transistor in that domain. Whenever I, I am interested in, in designing a, a amplifier, right? So suppose here 50 microamperes signifies the, the highest mark uh, of the base current, so that the device enter uh, device is there in the active region. So now if you place plus 15 over there, now if you place it in the middle, so 25 micro, then you have even more flux, more uh, flexibility. 25 to plus 25 there. Minus 25 there. On the other hand, if you place it over here, here, over here, then you have okay minus 10 only. On that side, you have 10 to 50, but this side you have only 10. Right. Typically, what we expect, we expect that my input signal is a symmetric one, a sinusoidal signal. Plus minus, you have the same same variations, right? So that's why we typically so that's your objective. You would like to place it in the middle while designing the or. Finding out the DC operating point, it should be placed in the middle so that you can have you can exploit the entire fluctuation. Suppose the fluctuation is from 0 to 50, and if you place it at 25, that means our close to you have the maximum fluctuation. Okay. Now let's uh, uh, take a look at some of the very well known biasing techniques. For that, last day I told you. That uh, whenever I uh, fix a particular IC value, ICQ or VCQ, uh, then it should be very much stable one. What do you mean by stability? If, if the temperature is is uh, is changed, if you if you uh, replace the transistor and transistor, right? In that case, we should expect that the Q point must not be shifted. We have to place it in the middle, right? At the same time, we have to be sure that with the change in temperature, this, uh, this, uh, this Q point doesn't vary. Or even if I this is a different transistor, suppose you have uh, designed the circuit with a given transistor of beta, and suppose uh, this, uh, this transistor is not functioning, so you have to replace with a different transistor having different beta. Suppose you have designed your transistor, designed your amplifier, or designed your biasing circuit with a given transistor, which beta is equal to and somehow, suppose this transistor is, is, is malfunctioning. 
is not working properly. So I have to replace this time to the defined time period. So basically independent of beta. Of beta. Yeah, it should be. It should be independent of beta. Or suppose uh, the temperature variation, you know that if the temperature change, Inside this auditorium, suppose uh, it's like uh, say uh, the beta is equal to 35, and if you go outside, the might be different. So this temperature difference is there. Moreover, you understand that IC and uh, IC is also IC itself is a function of temperature. Because either IC if you just beta IB plus you have this one plus beta times ICBO. Right? That leakage current. Hopefully, you have studied this in your basic electronics course. I should expect that uh, this del IC by del ICBO, that should not be, I mean, uh, this uh, stability factor will indicate the variation of IC with this leakage current. Constant ID and constant beta. Okay. So, and accordingly, you have to design or uh, some, some biasing circuit. Now, to start with, let's consider this particular circuit, the very simple circuit, which is today. Only sir, it's again like this one. This one. Oh, okay. Can you see the V, V, V situation? So, if the V, C, V, C saturation is this one. This one, this one. This one is the V, C saturation. So, what do you mean? It will be given. It's the property of the transistor itself. This one, this is your VC saturation, this voltage, this voltage VC saturation. This is the saturation region, this is the cutoff region, and this is the active region. Right. Okay. We will discuss uh, a few such biasing techniques. Now, to start with the first one is a fixed bias, which involves only two resistors. One is uh, for biasing the base, uh, base circuit. Fixed bias or base bias? Okay. One register is there between the supply your uh, base, resistance is RB, and there is another uh, resistance, like the load resistance, which is connected between the supply to the collector. Okay. So, last is almost the same. Last day we have instead of having, instead of connecting this RB from VCC, what we have done last day. This RB was connected from another supply node like DVB. So almost the same thing. So what is the formula? If you just simply apply KVL, hopefully you have studied KVL, you know what KVL. Then what is your IP then? Forget about this part. Forget about this part. For the thing, since you have a capacitor over there, and since we are performing DC analysis, that means what? You understand that the capacitor acts like an open circuit to DC. 1 by J omega C, and omega DC. So that is infinite. It infinite. Impedance, impedance, uh, offered by the capacitor to DC signal. Right, so whenever I am considering the DC analysis, so the, this part, this part of the circuit is completely, uh, is, is not uh, taking part uh, in this uh, DC analysis. Right, there is no connection, because since you have a capacitor, that means uh, this is acting like an open. Similarly here also, it's acting like open. As long as your DC sensor, right? Then uh, what is your then? How can you fi find out this uh, base current? It's very simple. Very simple. You have VCC here and some drop over there. Base current. This is the base current and this VB in that is equal to 0.7 volt here. So what is your IB then? A VCC minus 0.7 RB. Okay. What is your uh, IC then? Beta times IB. You know beta is given. Once you know, once you find out IC, then uh, you can easily find out what is my VCC. What is that? So this IC is flowing through this, VCC minus IC, RC, that is equal to VCE, because emitter is connected to ground itself. Here, ground. Now, if it is not connected to ground, then you have to measure this voltage only, this volt, this, this difference. Right. This time it is easy. Simply, uh, emitter is connected to ground. Right. And, uh, they have assumed that IC, I mean, VC sat is equal to zero, right? That is equal to zero. In that case, uh, what is your IC saturation? VC, VC sat zero, so VCC minus VC sat upon R. So VC sat is equal to zero. So VCC upon R. Now, if it is very uh, ideal kind of thing, ideal transistor, then VC uh, saturation is equal to uh, zero volt. 
So then VCC of ours and VC of is equal to VCC. Now what's the problem with this kind of circuit? Is there any problem with this circuit? This uh, fixed bias or base bias? Fixed bias or base bias. Problem with the circuit? Have you understood this uh, operation? So it is zero to kind of the they have assumed, they have assumed that the transistor is the ideal one. And the VCC side is equal to so they have written like almost equal to VCC of an earth. But in other words, you can say VCC is typically large, 10 volt and VCC saturation is very small, 0.2 volt, 0.3 volt. So 12 minus 0.2, they are making like only it's close to 12, 11.8, close to 12. So that's why there is an approximation sign, 11 point, VCC of an RC. Actually, this value should be this value should be IC sat is equal to VCC minus VCC upon RC. Since VCC sat is small with respect to VCC, so that's why they are making it approximate VCC upon RC. Okay. Okay, what's the associated with this? So why it is called HLV? I'm not going to write at this moment. Why it is called HLV? You'll understand this when we'll discuss the small signal. It's better not to confuse with uh, get confused with this uh, HLV and beta. Let's assume that it's not HLV for the time being. Uh, let's uh, this HLV is a hybrid parameter. We have not started. Beta. In fact, each AP and beta, you have two beta. One is beta DC, second is called beta AC. And whenever, I, whenever somebody is saying like H of FE, that means it's a beta uh, beta AC. These two values might be different. But remember for the timing, this beta is here, this is nothing but beta DC. Might not be the case always. Beta DC may be called beta AC, might be other than that. But don't get confused with HFE. Let's assume that is what you find HFE. This is nothing but is beta. Okay. Now the thing is that what's the problem you are encountering with this particular uh, circuit? One point is that the circuit is not stable. Biasing is not stable. Stability issue is there. That means there is a shift of Q point. Okay. Suppose you have this kind of architecture. You have RB is equal to uh, 360 kilo ohms. Typical RB is large. Why large? Any guess? IB R B is large. Remember here you have the same supply. You have the same. You have a VCC, you have a VVB. And that time I have told you that typically small with respect to VCC. In that case, you have some comparable value for R. At this time, you have the same connection. I mean the supply is same. Same 8 volt supply. From this 8 volt, you have this RB, they have this RC. And typical is I value is small with respect to IC. Order two difference because beta at 150 something like that. So that's why here also if it is two, two kilo ohms, it should be 360. That's two order larger, hundred times larger. So that's a 360 kilo ohms, right? Now if it is 360 kilo ohms, then uh, you calculate what is the value of your IB when beta is equal to uh, say uh, to hundred. At 25 degrees centigrade. It is equal to 125 degrees centigrade. You just calculate IBQ and what is the ICQ value you are getting? What's the IBQ? The meter, I mean uh, the base current? 7.3 by 360. Uh, what is the value then? <laughs> Point zero 0.02 milliampere. Point zero what is IC then? Multiplied with 100. 2 milliampere. 2 milliampere, then what should be your? This, is, this should be micro. This should be in micro. It's not in milli. This should not be in milli. Micro. Right? This is a micro ampere. Uh, 
2.028. What is VC? Multiply this with 2, subtract it from 8, 3.94. What is your ICQ, VCQ? 2.028, 3.94. Right? Now, if you do the same calculation with uh, beta is equal to 150, when the temperature from 20 degree centigrade to 100 degree centigrade. So, in that case, I will do the same because I is not dependent on beta. I is equal to VCC minus VB on divided by RB. That is fixed. One second you have to is 20.28. But what about the IC? The IC is not fixed now. IC is increased. Last time IC was 20.028 million ampere. This time it is 3.04. We just do this calculation. 3.04. Okay. It is changed and as a matter of fact, this is also different. Now, the most uh, challenging task is that here, if you, if you just closely observe these two values. Variation. The variation of uh, VCC from 0 to, I mean the VCC was at Right. So when your device is in uh, operation, then typically it is close to zero, 0 0.2 or close to zero, that will be zero. When the device is cut is cut off region, then what is your VCC? It is maximum VCC, 8 volt. So the fluctuation is up to 0 to 8 volt. Yes, Actually, it is 0 to 8 volt, but okay, 0 to 8 volt, you can uh, approximate from 0 to 8 volt. Okay, so where to place uh, 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 your uh, operating point? So close to four, four volt, right? So there you have got with uh, with uh, 25 degree centigrade, which is equal to 100. You have got VC to be 3.94. That's great. Close to that, right? But whenever beta has increased from 100 to 150 degree centigrade, then the operating point has shifted to 1.92 from four. four right? Is it desirable? No. Why is it so? Because the value of VC and as well as the value of IC, they are strong function of beta. And if there is some change in beta because of some other uh, external changes, some environmental changes, some temperature changes, this is going to affect the uh, corresponding VC value, corresponding uh, Q point significantly. So this is not at all zero. Right? So from 4 volt to 2 volt, close to you would like to place the, the operating point right in the middle, 4 volt, close to that, close to 4 volt. And it has reduced from 4 to say 2 volt. It's not at all desirable. So, to start with, to understand the concept, that uh, this particular biasing circuit, fixed bias, uh, this fixed bias circuit or this bias circuit is not at all desirable. Okay. So, that's the summary. I'm not going into the depth. Then the next one. Sir, sir, for this fixed bias, hmm. what are we adding in this circuit? Like the capacitance? No, we are not adding anything. Yeah. We have only two things. Yeah. Only yeah. one capacitor yeah. and one yeah. capacitor. So the biasing is both changed. Uh, biasing is done through base, base register and collector register. Until unless we have those registers, then you don't have the DC. Biasing means what? Biasing means establishing some DC current. Okay. Even if you are adding small signal, you have some DC current, DC base current, DC collector current, DC collector current, the voltage. That is accomplished if I connect, if, if I am not present over there, if this is not present over there, then you don't have a DC current. So RB at we are adding RB, we are adding RC. Because of which we are getting some non zero. Because RB is not there. Do you have, so this is absent, no? Yes. This part of the this part of the signal is completely detached from the rest of the circuit. Operation. Forget about this. So we'll discuss this one in detail uh, when I uh, move to unit number three. Right. So this is then you don't have any current. This is not this base is not biased. It's not biased. So to establish this biasing, to add this this path. Clear? Okay. Then the next biasing, which is called collector feedback bias. That means, collector to base, you have a feedback connection. Feedback you understand, no? From output to input, there is some connection. Okay, we will discuss this in, this in detail when we move to the feedback amplifier circuit. Let's assume that, okay, this is a kind of feedback. This is a kind of feedback, and what type of feedback? There are different topologies of feedback. These in detail whenever we move to the uh, feedback amplification. 
So even if beta changes by some amount, 50 percent, 20 percent, 80 percent, okay, IC will change. Definitely, it will change. Right, but that change can be resisted to some sense. Shifting will be there. Definitely, there will be some shifting, but that shifting is not right. So what is the reason behind more stable circuit here? Why more stable? Why do you think that this circuit is more stable? Because if beta changes, beta changes, what do you have? If beta changes, then you have IC value. Typical IC will increase. So generally, after the phone value, instruments, IC डिफरेंट configurations like common emitter configuration common base common character you will study all this thing depend on the configurations then sometimes your emitter current is your uh, when sometimes the character current is out not the base current base current is considered to be the input current okay so you can change the potential why is why the change is limited here because it increases if i see increases over what happens you have more if i have more beta Means more IC. Now, if you have more IC, you have this. Sorry, this is flowing through this, right? This is flowing through this. So, if you have more IC, so more drop will take place across this, and this hold is basically voltage of this base emitter circuit. Okay. So if you have more IC, you have less such base drive. That means it will drive the base current to reduce. In one hand, you have high beta, which tends to increase, the and whenever the IC is increased, more IC has to drop. That means you have less collector voltage over there. Less base drive. Less base current. That means it tends to reduce I B. So this product I B times beta will not be that. Last thing, what? We have I C also I C also increases. And ultimately, it leads to a condition which is called thermal runaway. Thermal runaway. More current. That means what? Uh, I square loss we consider that will be even large and damaged. Right? So the feedback, uh, rather the summary I have already mentioned, more stable, relatively poor AC characteristics. That part you might not understand right at this moment because we have not discussed anything regarding AC characteristics. A small thing. We'll study this one whenever we move to the AC analysis or feedback analysis. Okay. And typically, another one, the emitter feedback bias. So uh, there is one change, one change from the fixed bias. Only one change. The change is that we have connected on RE from emitter to ground. The same thing, same like fixed bias or base bias circuit. Only you have connected on RE over there. Now, without going into the mathematical calculation, the KVL analysis and all. Can you tell me whether this circuit is more stable, whether or not this circuit is much more stable as compared to your fixed bias circuit or base bias circuit? Qualitatively? Yes. Why? Almost no, qualitatively can you tell me? Qualitatively can you tell me? Target drop, so that's the expression. 
Beta changes. Suppose the beta changes, right? Beta changes, beta is increased. That means what? In one hand, you have more collector current. You have more collector current. More collector current means more base, uh, more collector current means more emitter current. That means you have more drop across this resistance, right? And then what about your base drive? This base drive is basically this voltage minus you have this voltage. This voltage minus this voltage divided by and minus this voltage minus this voltage, and then you have this V on over there, zero point seven volt. Divided by R B. No, that volt, that volt is also important, no? If you have more current, more collector current, you have more emitter current. More emitter current means more drop across R E. So this voltage is increased. Suppose this is your V E, right? Beta increases. That more I C or more I E. That means V is equal I times R E. Higher V, right? So, so what about the base current? How is it? How is it related between V E and V C C? Your base current. This IB is how much? This VCC? Minus, minus. VCC minus, minus, minus VE. VE minus what else? Minus VBE. Okay, you can make it minus VB, doesn't matter. If I just apply, if I just apply. KVL VCC is equal to IB times RB, right? Plus VBE here only VCC IB times RB. Here you have VB, right? Plus VE, right? So what happens if you have more I? This means more I. That means more V. That means what? If I C increases, this is relatively constant. This one will increase. If I C increases, this one is constant. This is constant, right? Left hand side you have this some constant. Right hand side some constant. Some increases. This must drop. That means you have some check, check and balance mechanism. In one hand, if beta increases, IC increases. On the other hand, you have some so that IP drops, so that the IC is remain almost is remain at almost at a constant potential. And if IC is fixed, then obviously you can find out what you buy, uh, this uh, VCQ and all. This is called uh, emitter feedback. This is another kind of feedback. Feedback is one type of feedback. You study the type, but there's so many feedbacks. Uh, topology one is known as the uh, the voltage series, current series, current current voltage, and there are so many feedback and feedback and feedback circuits. So we'll discuss this in detail. So the last circuit was a kind of this is another type of feedback circuit. So whenever we incorporate feedback in your amplifier or any any design, if you incorporate feedback now, then you have much stability. That means you should have some 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 input from the output also. We can use a student feedback. No. If you have the student feedback, that means we we'll like those responses from you. We have this TS committee meeting, TS student committee meeting. What is the use of that? This is typically used so that we can have some information from your side, so that the system is becoming much more stable. Right? Sir, here IC and IEC then again to equal. IC is equal to how much? Alpha times I. The I, I C and I E are the I C different instruments. Ah, they are I C. Yeah. Oh, here they are only. Oh, in the yeah, that's why. Yeah, 
Oh, that's right. There's an approximation sign. This is C minus I C Q because you know alpha times uh, alpha, is I, close to alpha is close to unity. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, you can prove for the exact value of I your alpha. Okay, let me. Okay, that thing we have already discussed. If beta increases, I C or I increases. That means V increases, and if V increases, V B drops. So I C does not increase. That. So circuit. The only change is that you have connected some R D. Okay, and this one is the this is the last uh, uh, biasing circuit. Voltage divided by bias, and typically this is used. This circuit is typically used. There you have one, two, three, four, four resistors. So far you have seen only one, one two resistors or three resistors. Now here you have four resistors. R1, R2 for voltage division, RC as the collector resistor, RE as the emitter resistor, right? Now, this circuit can be analyzed, we not all. This circuit can be analyzed from two different perspectives. One is, whenever this current is flowing from the VCC, this current is flowing, now right at this particular point, right at this particular point, you have two branches. One kind will flow through this, and the other flow through this. Current division. Now, depending also, you know this this particular load. So that is R2. And what about this load? This is basically the input resistance as provided by this transistor. provided by the transistor from here to here. Right. Now, if that resistance is very large, but you expect that more, more, almost all the current will flow through this. Right. This current, if I call this current to be say IB, so that current is relatively small with respect to this current. The question is that your I2 is greater than 10 times IB. I2 is greater than 10 times IB. That means here the resistance is very large with respect to this. And then this condition is known as the stage division bias. Steve voltage divider. It's not RD, I am coming to that. What is that actually? It's not RD. It's basically beta times RD. It's basically beta times RD. Typically, this beta times RD is larger with respect to RD. Uh, RD. Effective resistance. I am coming to that. Effective resistance, I am coming to that. Now, if this condition holds good, then it is very easy for you to calculate. You know that, okay, if this is that voltage R1, R2. What is that voltage then? R2 upon R1 plus R2 into VCC, that voltage over there, that is your base voltage. Over here, what is that voltage? This VB, R2 by R1 plus R2 into VCC. Then, this is the base voltage, and uh, there is a drop of 0 0.7 volt, right? So, this is, you can find out this emitter voltage. You divide this emitter voltage by RE, you'll be getting the emitter current. And once you get the emitter current, you'll be getting the base current. And once you get the base current, you can find out the correct current. Right? That is a stiff voltage divider by stiff. That is the condition. So the uh, formula, so the condition is that the the current through the resistor R2 must be greater than 10 times of the base current. Right. Yeah, that is the condition. And then that resistance. What is that resistance? Basically, from base to emitter, from base to emitter, you have a Battery like this, 0 0.7 volt, and then you have this one. Then what about that resistance? Looking at base, what is that resistance? This basically, what is that resistance? Looking at the base, this voltage R in base. What is that voltage? R in vo R in base. What is voltage about there? This is basically V. What is that current being drawn? IB, so V upon IB, that is equal to beta times RD. H a beta times plus beta times RD, beta times RD. Now if this beta times RD is much much greater than R2, right, then transistor doesn't load the, this, uh, this R2 resistor. 
Right, in that case, most of the current will flow through this R2. R2 is much, much greater as compared to uh, your uh, I. Sir, R in the greater? R in is much, much greater. Sir, V upon I V. That voltage, over here, what is the voltage? That is, that is voltage V. What is the current being drawn? I V. Right? And if they are comparable, if R in base and R2 they are comparable, what should be your equivalent current in that case? It is much more for accurate calculation. This should be your base voltage. Vb is equal to R2 parallel R in base. In that case, these two are coming in parallel. Right. In that case, these two are coming in parallel. R2 and R in base. These two are coming in parallel. And uh, this calculation is even more cal uh, even more uh, accurate calculation. Then what is the what is the current flowing through this? What is that voltage? This time you cannot neglect this one. You cannot neglect this one. The actual current is zero. Very small with respect to then you are just considering that okay, that is basically an open circuit. The R in base is larger as compared to R. This time they are comparable, right? R2 and R in base they are comparable. Then what is that voltage? So you have the parallel combination of these two. Sir, Now let's assume that this resistance is much much larger as compared to R2. Suppose R2 is equal to say 10 kilo ohms. And this resistance of 50 kilo ohms, 100 kilo ohms. Yes. So for approximate calculation, you can just neglect. And that is called a steep voltage division law, a steep voltage divider. If not, then you should follow this one. That's the actual actual calculation or exact calculation. Okay. And that's the summary. No, for actual calculation, you have to do that. No, but A bias to meter. You have much more stability because you have all these components. You have RE present over there. You have RE present over there, right? But the only one problem is that this circuit requires more points. This circuit has 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 resistors for bias. Much more stable, but uh, the problem is that, and as far as the uh, AC analysis is concerned, or AC uh, so small signal behavior is concerned, the gain is also high, unlike your, uh, your uh, this character feedback bias or your uh, emitter bias, but this is much more uh, stable, stable and the gain is also good. The gain you can understand whenever you study, the, whenever you discuss the, the small signal. Beta. Not that, in the voltage gain. Okay. Okay, fine. So, uh, with this, let me uh, conclude uh, this uh, discussion on uh, biasing.